But on the other hand, this is just revolting down here. This <laughs> is just gross. It's a mess. And it's only a small portion of what was under there. Uh, but, but so. It is what it is. I'm Sean the Modern Yeoman and we've got a really busy day today here on the Hagen's Homestead. Before we get into it though, let's get some water because it's a really hot day out there. So I've been using these little hydration tablets. Basically you take one of these and you put it in your water jug and then you pour your water on it and they seem to be working pretty good. I'm not sure exactly what all is in them. Electrolytes I guess. When I was younger, I spent some time working on a flight line in the Phoenix, Arizona area. And you want to talk about hot, it would regularly get to the 110s and even the 120s. And I remember I worked with a guy out there on the flight line who would always drink hot beverages. He'd make like hot tea, um, he'd, he'd heat up lemon water or something. He'd always drink hot stuff out there. So he'd have his thermos and he'd have hot things. And it was strange because, I mean, it was 110. 20 degrees out, why would you drink something that hot? And he swore that it lowered his body temperature. Something about drinking the hot water counteracted the ambient temperature in his body. I don't know if he was full of it or not, but he always seemed to be doing just fine out there in those insane temperatures. Maybe one of these days I'll give it a try, but in the meantime, I'm happy with my very cold ice water out there on these hot days. Thank you very much. Anyways, enough talking, let's get to work. Before we get into it, I wanted to give you guys a couple of updates. Uh, a few perceptive viewers in the last video asked about the silage tarp here at the side of the garden shed. Good eyes, number one, but number two, we're actually putting up a pumpkin patch, which we hope to start planting in the middle of June. So I actually busted out a lot of the old silage tarp that I used for the main garden area, cut it up to size, and laid it out over this area. So we hope to, right now we've actually got a few squash growing here already, and we're calling it the squaria, the squash area but we want to add some more melons, things like watermelons, and eventually pumpkins. And if we harvest them in the middle of June, or not harvest, if we plant them in the middle of June, we're hoping to harvest them sometime in the fall, which is perfect pumpkin season. So we're going to leave this silage tarp here for the next month. And by mid-June, mid to late June, we're going to peel this thing off. Hopefully all the grass underneath, the grass and vegetation underneath will be dead, and we can start planting pumpkins here. Also, we've had a pretty interesting phenomenon happen with some of the plants in our garden. Now, remember, most of these plants here have only been in the garden since we replanted maybe two weeks ago. And we noticed that some of the plants, especially the squash and cucumber varieties, their leaves were turning yellow. And even the tomatoes, they just weren't looking healthy. Now, we started looking... Hang on one sec. Tick, tick, tick. We started researching, why are my plants turning yellow? They're still alive, but they're turning yellow and they're just not looking all that healthy. And it was funny because the two issues that came up most, underwatering 
and overwatering. <laughs> so we actually felt down inside the beds and we found out that a lot of them were still very, it's still very wet in the soil. So believe it or not, we actually held off from watering, watering them for a few days and that seemed to help them quite a bit. You can see here that some of these plants, yeah, they still look a little bit yellow, but I can tell you they're not nearly as yellow as they were just a few days ago, just two days ago. So by holding off on the water, as crazy as that seems, that actually helped them quite a bit. So we're just gonna be a lot more vigilant about feeling into the soil and testing whether it's wet or not, because when it's too wet, it just rots out the roots and they need room to breathe. And so, yeah, believe it or not, not watering them every day, but more like two or three days a week, seems to be helping them quite a bit. We'll continue with this experiment and keep you guys updated. Okay, so it seems like every time I walk outside, my industrious father seems to have embarked on a brand new project. And that's definitely the case today. Let's go see what he's up to. I don't know if you heard the lead up, the intro. I was just talking about how industrious you were. Oh. <laughs> it seems like every time I walk outside, you've embarked on a new project. Well. What have we got going on make, today? Make, Boy, that's a lot of beer cans. Yeah, previous uh, occupant was a big fan of the barley malt. So you're pulling up the deck, <laughs> yes. the back deck. Now this one isn't salvageable like the front one is. <clears throat> yeah, that's the thing. Uh, the front one, we weren't exactly sure to begin with, uh, but when we did a little bit of work to it, uh, it was obvious that it could be redeemed, so to speak. This one, sorry, but no redemption. Yeah. Uh, this. Some things are fixer-uppers and others this are... This one is not. Terror-downers. <laughs> <laughs> this... So you've been, you've just been taking the old crowbar and loosening up these boards? Yes. Uh, so I guess on the positive side of this thing being so worn out and just kind of ratty condition is that it makes pulling it up not too hard to do. And they didn't, they didn't use screws and there aren't a ton of nail. I mean, there are quite a few, but it could be a lot worse. Plan is get this thing pulled up and uh, I don't know whether or not these uh, support joists, like that one is in horrible shape, but um, there are some of these that I might- Leave this support structure up. Yeah, perhaps, okay. I don't know. I'll have to make that decision and then go, go buy either the lumber or we're thinking about maybe the composite stuff. Nice. Which used to be uh, just kind of like ridiculous, uh, way more expensive than lumber, but with the cost of lumber now, the, the price difference between the, yeah, the composite and the regular lumber is pretty close. So Nice. May end up going with that, and that way I don't have to worry about fussing with, um, you know, staining and restaining mm -hmm. and upkeep and all of that. Also, I believe you did some work out front. It looks like you've got a flower bed going underneath the new deck, uh, or the deck that you right, rehabilitated up, kind of, kind of up front. Uh, adjacent to it. Um, we wanted to get some flowers going uh, while it's still spring, even though, I mean, it's like 90 degrees out right now. Mm -hmm. It might as well be summer. It looks great. <laughs> yeah, we, uh, we decided to put some little landscaping bricks in and uh, just get a, a variety of, um, well, actually, it's both annuals and perennials going. So you need some help uh, tearing the rest of this down? Man, I won't turn down help. All right, let's get to it. Well, Dad, on the one hand, it's gratifying to get this old deck up yeah. in a matter of half an hour. Yeah. Didn't take long at all. But on the other hand, this is just revolting down here. This it's, is just gross. It's a mess. And it's only a small portion of what was under there. Uh, 
But, but so it is what it the is. rake and trash, and you're just gonna get all this up now. Yep, make a trip to the dump, and um, then we'll make a trip to Home Depot or Lowe's or whatever. And then at that point, like you said, you're just kind of replicating what was there before, but with new wood and not all the junk underneath. <laughs> exactly. That's all we got for now. Thanks for hanging out with us today, everyone. Work continues, and it's always going to continue. There's never, ever a dearth of projects here in the Hagen's homestead. Until next time, remember, as always, with everything, slowly, slowly. Mm -hmm.